Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we are going to be playing some Gyruda combo. Uh, this list, uh, I took it from Howling Minds, another great content creator. Do check him out. Um, but effectively, uh, we are building around Gyruda, the companion. When he enters the battlefield, you mill four, and you get to put an, you and your opponent mill four, and you put an even CMC car, a creature into play. Um, all of the cards in our deck are even because of his companion restriction. Um, and there's a couple new cards that came out in the set. Um, so basically, we are primarily trying to self-mill ourselves into a Thassa's Oracle win. Um, but, or you can just kind of beat down. Uh, the cards that we got from the new set are Glorious Protector. Um, basically, flashes in, goes on top of your creatures, exiles them. Then when it leaves, you get them back in. So it's another way to reset the trigger. Um, with Thassa and Glorious Protector... You can create like your own Yorian loops, especially with Charming Prince. Um, there is Shepherd of the Cosmos. Weird card, but uh, six mana, three, three, four, tell four. Uh, you can, when it enters the battlefield, you return target permanent with two or CMC or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Um, so this could be Fabled Passage, but it, most importantly, it is this new land, Port of Carfell. Um, six mana. Mill four cards, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, so you can create a loop with it. You can get back your uh, Gyrudas that have been milled. Uh, so it's a really interesting kind of shell that you have here. You have some spot creatures in the sense of like Dranith Magistrate as House Adventures and um, Ultimatum. You have Karavek versus all like the 1 1 weenie style decks. Uh, so Acquisitions Experts attack their hands, Solemn for Ramp. And then in the sideboard, we have Crypt for Graveyard Hate, uh, Disdainful Stroke Negate when we need counters, Elder Fang Disciple as Discard, some removal, and a Masker Worm. Um, I get to play this deck. We're kind of closing in on Diamond, so I'm just going to play some friendly games with this. We will see how it goes. If we absolutely obliterate people, we will take it to the ladder, but let's figure out how this deck plays out first, because it's not the most linear. Uh, traditional standard play. I will be focusing more on historic uh, for the next week just because the MIQ next weekend is historic. So, do want to figure out what deck I am playing and how best to go about playing it. I uh, usually prefer this in your deck, but sure, why not? You kind of want to mill into the Thassa's Oracle, but if we have it in hand, we can probably just cast it out. And then if it dies, we get it back. So I usually like... We know right now that this will always be a basic. These lines here, we might want to play out differently depending on what we draw. So I can foretell you, but you're not really bringing anything back right now, so I think we just get Charming Prince going. Um, I actually don't think I mind a Glorious Protector here. My turn's likely going to be Gyruda to hand, Solemn the following turn. We do need double white for this. We'll also need double white for this, potentially. We got a reader on the opponent's side. The once played quite a bit, but not as much now. Opponent's probably like, but they're not playing Yorian. Some sort of Rakdos pile. Um... I mean, we're not blocking this turn. I want to use Glorious Protector as like a surprise value. We can always use this to buffer our life total after. So I'll get another white source here. I 
potentially be a sack deck. Um, let's do this. They could steal my Charming Prince. It's not the end of the world, but if we can use Glorious Protector, that'd be nice. Let's get another black source here, and then we can fetch a blue with this if needed. No attacks. I'll probably block with Solemn. I'm gonna Gyruda this turn. See what's going on. So they can steal my Charming Prince. Attacking with. So if they steal my Charming Prince, then I will block just because they're going to be able to get rid of my board. They likely won't attack in with the Woe Strider, though. Trading with the Shade feels a little bad, but. At least it taxes their mana for the turn. Yeah. So their attacks likely these two. I think for two damage we take it. If they don't, that means they might not have aligned. Because otherwise, it's a pretty free cast. They village rights it. Even more interesting. Because then you're likely to draw another land and you're not going to play out much more. Even then, you push through some more damage. Opponent has been a fan of dealing large sums of damage to themselves. All right, spin to win time. This is likely a bone crusher giant that they have for them to shock in. What do we get? What do we get? Thassa would be really nice here. Just go Heartless Act. Okay. So I can get a Croxa, but I think I would like this. Your go, opponent. So this turn they can escape back Croxa. Kind of wanted to have Glorious Protector up. Did we mill a... We didn't mill the land. So I think this turn is likely Fertel. Get this on the cheap. Can get Charming Prince back. Heartless on the Heartless on the stack was a little unfortunate. I will block here. We want to try to find another Gyruda or a port. So we have Acquisition, Expert. So I think we force him to discard something. 
have the negate up if needed. This can get rid of some potential removal. I'm gonna keep this in the graveyard. More likely not winning the Thassa's route. Glorious Protector in the air can provide some beats. I can also block this turn and then flash in Glorious Protector. Emergstrom Predator. So I want to catch them here with the attack on Wostrider. So here I can ambush Viper, the low strider, killing it. They can sack it to the Predator. And then what I can do is do this Charming Prince. Then Charming Prince blank, then put everything under the Glorious Protector again. No, they ate my prince. They ate my prince. So not as good now that I lost that. So we hit the land here. So like realistically, not doing a whole lot. So I can do this, just set up a scry, have this die, doesn't really matter. I don't think negate's super relevant at this point, because then I can get this back the following turn with this. Opponent. Literally have nothing. Uh, guess we're putting Glorious Protector on top. You're only two. Don't really want lions at this point. So they can Croxa here, they get rid of the negate in my hand. You're non angel, you're an angel warrior, so it doesn't quite work the way I want it there, but still decent nonetheless. So this is likely Croxa. That guy Ruda came in really clutch. Or that heartless act on our guy Ruda. Hmm. So like I th think We're just playing defense. Sack another creature becomes, Let's see what they do here. It's a pretty free, because if they let this die, I get it back. If they don't, then I flash 
this in afterwards and protect it. So they can sack here to exile a creature in my graveyard. So they might proactively do this, but they should wait to respond. So they can do it now. I think we, s we have glass casket. Get rid of Croxa here. It bails us out for a turn. They get another exile here. We're just trying to dig our way to Garuda. Unfortunately, with them having Predator, it's not that great for us. We are a graveyard-based deck, in a way. Vasa would be good. Six cards, so we can see another Croxa come in. So here we're gonna Glorious Protector, put this in as a block. Second Predator. You got it. They could be setting up like a Heartless Act turn where they're trying to bait me into the double block. Fortunately, don't have... Well, I guess at this point, Thassa taps down their stuff as well. Extinction Event is also a good draw for us. Gets around their stuff. It does hit our evens, which is a bit awkward. Don't really care about Karavek. That's not really something we're bringing back at this point in the game. Okay. Anyways. Um, so their deck, we don't really, I don't think, want the negates. Heartless Act seems fine. Dranith Magistrate, they cast stuff from the graveyard in Croxa and that, but we'll trim down one, I think. Karavak, they have the three one, they have the other. I can bring in one of these. Trim down an Acquisition Expert, I think. Do we think the Thassa's Oracle line makes sense? Ah, it's playing like this. I want to win through Thassa's Oracle. I don't know why opponent conceded there. They're pretty far ahead. They anticipated the block. Like, we were blocking anyways, but they had the ability to block Sack. They, we couldn't really attack through them. Maybe opponent had to go. We'll see. How's everybody doing today? Come on, opponent. Croxa's a little bit of an issue for us to deal with, but we'll give it a run, see how it goes.
more than anything, the Predators causes a bit of headache. Just attacking our graveyard, we can't really uh, time it. Come on, opponent. What's up? What is up, opponent? Alrighty, I'm back in action. Friendo, where'd you go? Doo -doo -doo. Well, in the meantime, we are looking to rank up fairly quickly. This is on TapGG. It is a tracker for um, all your Arena in games. I do have a note in all my YouTube videos. You can download it for free. The link's there. Um, but the deck I've been ranking up with a lot is Mono Red in Historic. You can see the stark jump up here. I finished around 150 Mythic last month. Go away, Kaspersky. I don't know what opponent's up to. But definitely a good deck. Hey, James, how's it going? Yeah, we are on some Howling Mines nonsense. You haven't checked out Charizard James, another great streamer. I'm trying to learn how to play it before I go onto the ladder with it. It's not the most linear deck. How was your uh, Doom session the other day? I think we're just setting up our scries this go around. So will probably be stomped. They're holding priority as such. It's actually better if they Heartless Act here. I think with both Heartless Act and Thing, we're okay. And then them doing that before we Scryed is actually advantageous for us. It gives us more information whether or not we have a creature. So generally in those cases, you do want to wait on your opponent. Got Ruta to hand. This will let us Solemn next turn. Stride Aroni. Um, so I think we do want to thin out here. Just because once we start milling, we're more likely to miss land drops. Just if you mill over all your basics, it's going to be harder to see. Because we have this for our other black source, we have this, so I can get Ruta next turn. If they go Immerstrom Predator though, I'm gonna try to bait out the extinction of it. They go Rankle. Cool beans. I think we're fine with Rankle. It's this discard sack. I'm just going to go Ruda. And they're letting us draw a card. Free value. I'll take the card draw. So there is the Dranith Magistrate. I'm 
We came to cast Guy Rudas. We're casting Guy Rudas. Immer Storm Predator or the Glorious Protector? I would love to protect my Guy Ruda. Hey, hey friend, you want to kill my creature? Start my engine again? What do we get in the graveyard? Do we get a port? We got a port. So next turn we're doing Shepherd to get the port back so then we can do Guy Ruda nonsense. They could kill Protector that lets me Guy Ruda. I do help them find their Croxas here, but I think between the Heartless Act and Extinction Event, it's not too bad. Okay. That's something. Now, do they sack my protector? So we are at 10 life. We do need to be mindful. Nine. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can acquisition expert. Get a card out of their hands. Noble's not a type anyways. Okay, so get rid of the claim. So it probably means they have another claim in hand. Then I think we just gain three life here. This gives me two blockers, and then I have the Heartless Act at instant speed. Heartless Act, we can surprise them, um, get rid of the, the Glorious Protector. If they steal something, I can kill like the Rankle. We're getting Protector back next turn anyways, or they're gonna sack it, so we get Gyruda back. So either they give me a Protector back or they give me Gyruda. Either way, good for me. No Croxa yet out of them is relevant. fine a Cronin war okay kill that So they have to give me my protector back or they lose it. I can also use this extinction event. So they, they sack my charming prince, they lose that. Do I have another, oh, I get my charming prince back anyway, so I can gain three more life. They draw two. Ooh, that was a mistake. They didn't sack it. Um, I mean, we're just getting that card out of their hand, right?
if I can get port back. I think we get port back. That lets me get back something next turn. This gains me two life, insulates my life total a bit. Get to get our first view of the port, see how it plays out. Um, oh, I have to attack. Go, go, Charming Prince. Opponents also use most of their clock. They've missed two sack triggers. Opponents used twice the amount of clock that I have. Bastion of Remembrance. Hello and good luck. It's almost lethal. That is almost lethal. I think we are going to have to Garuda time. We have extinction event here. So they drain, they drain, they drain. Then we play Dranith, so they can't. Cast the Woe Strider back from the graveyard. Ah, that's a little iffy actually. So they could cast Woe Strider back. Oh, I know what we do. We. How oh, it supports casting costs? I know the line. So we can port, get back Charming Prince. So we have to attack here. Oh, I don't have enough mana. Damn it. All right, no Croxa for a turn. No Croxa for one turn. Croxa kills me. Hits me for two. Village rights. Opponents get in there. Land stomp. So, get back you, you get back you, you exile you, all right, we pulled that off. That was a pretty cool demo of the deck. Not too shabby. Nice little notice. Mythic qualified. Always a nice pop-up.